Hello, Tar Heel Nation. Welcome back to another episode of UNC Hoops Talk. Uh, this is the podcast for the fans by a fan. We're all passionate Tar Heel uh, fans join together and just uh, where it's my goal, my mission to unite Tar Heel Nation as much as we can. Uh, I am your host, Dan DeWitt, and this is the 72nd episode of the UNC Hoops Talk podcast. And another quick turnaround with just one game to cover this week. We will jump into the Davidson game very quickly. Uh, but I just wanted to thank you for listening to joining the conversation that we have here at UNC Hoops Talk and uh, for joining in the journey of the 2015-2016 season with us. If you are not already subscribed uh, to the podcast, I would encourage you and love for you to do that on any platform, uh, wherever you listen, if it's YouTube, if it's um, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, any podcast catcher, we should be there. I'd love for you to do subscribe. And if you could leave a review so that other passionate Tar Heel fans could join in the conversation and, and be united with us, that would be awesome. Um, this should be a fairly quick podcast as we do have just one game to jump into and then look forward to the next week's games coming up. And so I am ready. If you are not, pause, get ready, and come back. But I know that if you're here, if you're listening, you're ready. So let's jump on in. Um, Davidson game. We played Davidson at home and on Sunday evening. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, a little worried about this. Davidson had a pretty potent um, – Offense. They hadn't played anybody spectacular, but uh, they had the Sullivan guy putting up, you know, 30, 40 points a game. Uh, I think it was him or Gibbs, one of the two. They were they were putting up crazy numbers heading in, so people were worried about you know their offense and um, you know in school or in state rival. Uh, I shouldn't say rival, in state school. A lot of guys that maybe want to play at North Carolina or the big time schools and kind of get overlooked and um, want to take it to it. We know there's always guys that go off from the three-point line against us from these smaller schools, mid-major schools. Uh, and so, yeah, kind of a game that had me a little worried. Not that we wouldn't win, anything like that, but, you know, that it would be closer than we would, than it should be. Um, but the Tar Heels came out. They came out from the beginning. They, they continued the intensity that they showed in the Maryland game and took it right to Davidson from the beginning. Um, jumped out on them and never looked back. Ended up with a 33-point win. I mean, there's there's no way I would have bet on something like that, that we would win by 33. Now, I would say we'd win by double digits, you know, in the teens, maybe up into 22 towards the end of the game if it got away. But this game was never in question. Um, and, and, yeah, we just uh, played quite well. Uh, not that it was a perfect game. Um, but, you know, it's Marcus Page's second game back, and and we uh, continue on what looks to be a very talented team. Vaulted the Tar Heels up to number three in the latest poll. And, uh, yeah, just a lot to be excited about. It's a lot, a lot to um, be looking forward to as we go, and, and hopefully everything, you know, if we can continue to get better, like, yeah, obviously the sky's the limit. And obviously we were preseason number one, and, and – People knew this about us, but uh, yeah, we just got to make sure we're enjoying this and, and we're going along the ride with them and and not taking it for granted, uh, not always nitpicking, um, which is a little bit of what I do here on this podcast. We try to nitpick and see where we can get better and where we can improve. And obviously, hopefully the guys do that as well. And I think they do, but uh, we got to make sure we're enjoying this ride as well. So um, jumping into stats a little bit. Yes, the lovely stats of what they are and what they tell us and uh, sometimes what they don't. Um, but, yeah, big-time win, 98-65 over Davidson. We had 10 guys play double-digit minutes, uh, as well as Kenny Williams at 8, so almost 11 guys in double, double digits of minutes. Uh, led off the bench in scoring by Nate Britt with 17 points. He was 6 for 8, um, shooting 2 for 3 from the three-point line. Um, yeah, 17 points in 16 minutes. Uh, now that's production, that's efficiency. Uh, and before I forget too, I, we need to make sure that we are praising Nate Britton, Theo Pinson, as long as they continue to, 
um, accept their roles and to be productive out of these roles. Like that might be the most important thing this season. Uh, Theo Pinson only six points in 17 minutes in this game, but had four assists to zero turnovers, a steal, a couple rebounds. Um, you know, and those guys, their minutes are cut nearly in half. They were getting, you know, high 20s. Uh, I think Nate had played into the 30s. I think even Theo maybe had a game with over 30 minutes uh, in, a, in a game. And they were cut to you know 17 and 16 in this game. If you remember, Nate Britt only played 10 minutes in the last game, in the Maryland game. Um, you know, but to come in and get 17 points in 16 minutes, to Theo to accept that role, you know, four assists to zero turnovers in 17 minutes. We have to make sure that we are, you know, those guys are getting the attention. Not that they listen to these podcasts, not that they see it or whatever, but um, we got to make sure that they feel and they know that we appreciate what they're doing for this team and taking a lesser role, lesser minutes, um, and that they do that willingly. So, yeah, led in scoring by Nate Marcus Britt. Ah, Marcus Britt. Yeah, there you go. Nate Britt. Um, Justin Jackson, 15 points, shot seven for 13, not bad. One for five from three, so he's got to get that going a little bit. Five rebounds, uh, three assists, but did have five turnovers. Um, Bryce Johnson, 13 points, nine rebounds, so a rebound off another double-double for Bryce. Um, Joel Berry had 11 points, four assists to one turnover. Marcus had 13 points. Uh, four assists to one turnover. You know, look if you look at our three point guards there, it's twelve assists to three turnovers. I mean, that's phenomenal. That's awesome. If we can get that, I mean, we are going to be really hard to beat if we get that from our guards. And then uh, Kennedy Meeks nine points, ten assists. So four of our starters are in double digit scoring. Kennedy is the only one not with nine points, and he only played eighteen minutes uh, because you know obviously we we came out and kind of blitzed them and. Uh, we had such a lead for a lot of the game. You know, other guys could get minutes. Uh, I don't know that they miss. I don't necessarily agree where they went, but yeah, in 18 minutes he had you know nine points, ten rebounds. Easily could have gotten the double figures for him. And then we had Nate off the Brit. Nate, man, I am struggling with Nate's name today. Sorry, Nate. I know you're out there listening. Uh, but <laughs> uh, and then we had Nate off the bench in double figures. So you know. Great balance in a game like this. Uh, it's not like one guy went off or a few guys or anything like that. It's everybody really contributing. Um, other guys off the bench, I mentioned Nate and Theo. Isaiah got 13 minutes off the bench. Again, I love, especially in a game like this, love to see it go up. But uh, was not real productive. Some kind of cheap, quick fouls. Uh, just two points. Uh, had a block. Uh, only one rebound. Had three fouls, and like I said, it was, he just never really got in the rhythm, I guess. I don't know, and that's why I'd like to see his minutes up because uh, Joel James also had 12 minutes, got 5.7 rebounds, and, and sure, that sounds productive for five points and seven rebounds in, in 12 minutes of play, but again, we were blowing them out, and I would much rather see you know Kennedy get up to that 20-minute mark, uh, get Hicks going a little bit more, get him up to the 18-minute mark, and leave Joel James down, you know, five, six minutes. I know it's not going to happen in games like this, but um, I guess, again, that's me nitpicking. Uh, but Luke May also got 10 minutes, uh, didn't produce a ton for us, three offensive rebounds, uh, which is good, a steal, uh, missed all four of his shots. And then Kenny Williams, like I said, had eight minutes, shot two for three, had four points, uh, still miss, hasn't hit a three yet, I don't think. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Kenny Williams has hit a three yet. Did have three rebounds, uh, and then the rest of it is kind of uh, garbage minutes. Everybody else had two minutes in there. Um, and really, what's even maybe better than our stats, looking into uh, Davidson's individual player stats, is nobody really went off. Jack Gibbs had 19 points, uh, and they had two other guys with double digits, 11 and 10. But, uh, the, you know, their guard shot three for 11 from three, two for eight from three, and then the other guy didn't take any. So, and, and really the other, everybody else on the team either didn't make any or there's one other guy that was two for six and another guy one for two. So, you know, that's huge. We don't guard the three-point line great uh, or efficiently, effectively, really. Um, so for us to do that is, is great. Of course, we have better athletes. Um, you know, better speed, better 
uh, all that stuff really than the players at Davidson. But uh, it's got to start somewhere. We got to get confidence, and and hopefully we build off of this. As far as looking team stats for us, uh, twenty one assists, the fifteen turnovers. And Roy kind of hit on this a little bit in the press conferences. A lot of those turnovers were kind of dumb, you know, offensive fouls and stuff that. Could have it could have been a better ratio there than twenty one to fifteen as far as assist to turnovers go. It could have been uh, taking those turnovers down to you know almost single digits with a lot a lot of those. Uh, just three blocks, uh, seven steals, shot eight for twenty three from the three point line, um, which if I, you give me a second here is thirty five percent, so not a decent percentage from the three point line. Uh, 82% for the game from the free throw line, um, just shot 17 of them. And again, you could, you could probably talk on this even more, but, uh, not, you know, we shot 17 free throws. They shot 13. Uh, I don't know if it's the pace that was, the game was played at what, but the refs, you know, with the new rules and stuff, not really into play there. Um, but that really sums it up, uh, and hits on kind of all the points there are. Uh, besides the fact of how good we're looking since Marcus is back again, it's still a small sample size in just two games. But you have to be positive about this. You have to be excited about this. And, and you know, we'll see. They're both home games. Um, you know, big game against Maryland, a, a in-state opponent in Davidson. Again, both at home in the Dean Dome. Uh, so we'll see uh, as we transition now into the schedule, we'll see how we do as we go on the road. This Saturday, we go to Texas. Uh, we play in Austin. It's a 515 Eastern tip on ESPN against the Shaka Smart led Longhorns. Uh, Shaka's first year there. They've been okay, nothing great. And we kind of knew he didn't have the players that he wants to run his Havoc de- defense. Uh, so there's been a little bit of ups and downs there. Again, a game we should win. Maybe even should win, you know, comfortably. Maybe not by thirty-three points, but um, you know, if we take care of business, we play the way we have been and we can. Uh, should be no problem for us. Uh, but we do go on the road, play, you know, at least a Power Five conference uh, opponent. Um, I don't, I don't want to predict if Texas is going to make the tournament or not. They, I think they should be all right in the Big Twelve. They're finishing in the top half or so. Uh, and then next Wednesday, we follow that up playing Tulane back at home. That's a 7 p.m. Eastern tip on ESPN2. Uh, again, another one we should be all right with as long as we play up to our standards. And that leads us into the CBS Classic, uh, Sports Classic, whatever it's called, uh, where we play UCLA. We, we break out the black uniforms, all that good stuff. But uh, we will get into that next week as we should easily have a podcast before that UCLA game. Hopefully... Uh, I'll have time after the Tulane game so that we can cover two games instead of just one. Uh, like I said on last week's podcast, I wasn't sure if I was going to podcast this week or not, just having the Davidson game. But uh, I almost couldn't wait until this late. If, I, if my schedule would have been different, I definitely would have done it earlier in the week. But I was, I was pumped and excited after that Davidson game. I mean, we just looked so, so good. Uh, that that oil, well-oiled machine that we have looked like against or with Dean in the past and and even the, the top teams of, of Doherty and, and um, Bill Guthridge and, of course, uh, Roy taking, uh, you know, in his championship years and even some of his better years. So we're up there. Um, we're definitely going to compete as long as we keep getting better. Uh, we got to make sure we don't get big heads. Uh, obviously, Texas isn't really a trap game. Uh, maybe the two-lane game would be more of that. But, you know, Texas going into – an opponent that is capable uh, is probably the best way I can say it. Uh, you know, going into a, a, a team that can beat us if we're not going to play up. And, and that's what we've seen in the past with, with the, kind of this team. Uh, these guys have been around for a while now. We've seen them not take care of business against team they should have, uh, either making it closer than what it should be or even losing. Uh, and that was, maybe that's what's so exciting about the Davidson game is there was never, you know, Davidson tried to make runs and we just always answered. Uh, and we and we just really just took it to him the whole game. We didn't really play down to our competition like we had. Uh, so we got to make sure that continues. But uh, Texas is, is there. We don't come to play if we just think you know we're going to show up because we're number three in the country now. We're North Carolina, all this stuff. Uh, it is a team that can beat us. And so 
You could say that about any game, of course, but uh, that one. And then Tulane, if we're looking ahead to UCLA, uh, if you haven't heard, if you only follow North Carolina, UCLA took down top-ranked Kentucky. Again, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know that. You follow college basketball probably enough to know that and know why we jumped up and, and Kentucky fell, if you look at the polls. But uh, UCLA, you know, I only caught the last, you know, three quarters of the game. Uh, Marcus Lee was already out for Kentucky. And but UCLA kind of handled them and they had answer for everything and um, looked pretty good. So, uh, again, we'll talk about that game more next week in in the next podcast. Um, Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And uh, iTunes is probably the best place where you get it first. But, uh, yeah, make sure you you, make sure you stick with us. Uh, Give me feedback. Um, You can do that in so many ways. Look in the description of this podcast. You'll find all the ways you can connect with me, uh, talk North Carolina basketball, talk college basketball, uh, or just give feedback or suggestions for the podcast. I I welcome it all, good, bad, indifferent. Um, Bring it on. But, yeah, that Tulane game could be a trap game, too, if we look forward to the UCLA game too much uh, in, in the spotlight that comes with that. But, again, we will hit on that stuff next week. Um, we've We've gone through the games already this week. I know it's a little bit shorter. I hope that's okay. I hope you understand. Maybe it's a break. Uh, you can let me know if you like the shorter podcast better than the long ones. Um, again, I'll take all that feedback. Before I do let you go, though, uh, if you listened to last week, some of you, uh, <laughs> names to remain anonymous, but uh, said the little spiel I did about um, tradition scars was a little bit long. You thought it was too much of an ad, that kind of stuff. They're, they're not a sponsor. Uh, I just wanted to give them a big time shout out for sending me the scarves and I'll, I'll try to make it a little bit shorter this week, but I, I definitely wanted to give them the props uh, that they deserve for being so kind. Um, and I actually have them here. If you're watching on video, sorry, if you're listening to the podcast, I'll try to get a video or a, a picture up on Instagram or on, on Twitter or something, but uh, look at what time it is right now. Go to the video, youtube.com slash UNC Hoops Talk jump to that time and and check them out but uh got two scarves here from from them and i will put their website link a url in the uh description below but this one they both say carolina on one side and then uh tar heels on the other side they got uh, the sweet nc um you know the frills on the end like a normal scarf not super thick but if you live in north carolina or like i do in texas uh, plenty, plenty warm enough if you use it for that. For me, it's going to be more of a decorative thing. Go up with all my Tar Heel stuff. And there, here's the other one, uh, Carolina. And uh, let me flip it around here real quick. Oh, upside down. All right, let's do this. All right, there we go. And then Tar Heels on that side. Again, sweet NC there. Uh, if I had to pick, God, it would be tough to pick. This one's a little bit thicker uh, than, than that one, but that one's a little bit softer. Uh, if you were going for, this is my, here, unofficial, I'm going to make it too long for you. Sorry, guys. If you're going to go for more warmth and actually using the scarf, I would go with this one, uh, the one that's got, you know, the black on the end there. Uh, it's a little bit warmer, I think. If you're going for, you know, uh, I don't know, wear it around the house or something, make it a game, make it a game scarf or something, I would uh, go with this one. They lo- both look sweet. They're both awesome. They're going to, both going to be decorative for me, go up with all my Carolina stuff once we get moved into our new house. Uh, but you don't want to hear about that stuff. Um, we're going to be moving here hopefully in the next week to two weeks. It's going to be crazy. Hopefully I can keep up with the podcast. I've, I've explained that in past podcasts as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, if, if you go and support them, that would be awesome. Uh, on, on Twitter, it's at Tradition Scarf. Uh, the website is traditionscarves.com. I will, I think I forgot last week. I will try to remember this time, or if not, call me out on it, but put the, their URLs in the bottom. If you do go there and check them out, I don't have a promo code for you. Uh, they haven't uh, given me anything like that, anything special, but definitely, uh, let them know that, uh, I sent you, sent you there. Um, and even if you don't buy anything, you know, shoot a tweet at them and thank them for sending me it. Cause uh, I want them to know how how thankful I am. I don't know that they listen to the podcast or not, but um, really appreciate it. Really awesome scarves. Uh, and and it, 
if you're not a Tar Heel fan, you're listening to this. They have other teams, other colleges, pretty much all of them, I think. I haven't really looked, but I don't assume that too many non-Carolina fans are listening to this, so I'm not going to spend time on that. Um, long enough, hopefully, having that little ad or <laughs> shout-out at the back. And, hey, if they want to be a sponsor and give you guys a promo code, again, give them a little shout-out on, on Twitter or something. Tell them to support the podcast uh, in more ways than they have. And uh, for you, I just thank you for your support. Best way you support it is to listen, of course, tell your friends and family that Tar Heel fans. Um, go download it on their phone. Uh, if they have an iPhone, go to the podcast app, search in UNC Hoops Talk, or uh, put, a, put a podcast app on their phone and, and subscribe for them uh, so they catch every episode every week. And uh, besides that, you know, sharing the podcast out. And if you want to do any more support, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, dot com slash UNC Hoops Talk. Again, that link is in the description. Uh, you can give as little as a dollar a month and, and help support, and all that money goes into making the production of this podcast that much better. Um, but that's all I got for you this week. Um, I wouldn't say a big week coming up, but it uh, should be a fun week. Should be Every week should be exciting and fun for us from here on out. Uh, and uh, just remember, until I talk with you again next week, Go Heels.